Hey students, welcome back. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use App Lab in, at Code.org to create a fun interactive game. Uh, right now I'm looking at a page on the Code.org website. If you go to Code.org slash educate slash App Lab, you'll see this list about halfway down the page of starter projects. We're going to remix this project called Poke the Pig. So click on this here, remix the project. It will open up a new project in your editor. Now you should be logged into code.org at this point um, and so you can save your work. Okay, so this is what the code looks like in the starter project and as we know we're going to click the run button here to run the program and when we do we've got this little pig and it says oh, oh. I don't know if you can hear that sound in the background. There's a sound a little pig oinking every time I poke it and it gave me 10 seconds to poke the pig as many times as I could. I poked it 15 times and then it, it ends the game and brings me to this screen. So this game consists already of two screens and um, it also has a way of counting how many times I click the pig. We'll think of that as like our score and it's keeping score for us and then when it comes to this screen it shows us our score. And if we reset set the button uh, or click the reset button, it'll go back to the first screen and we can play it again. All right, so our goal is to improve this. Okay, it's, it uh, talks about this up in the comments up here, or I should say, the, yeah, the comments at the top. It says there's a challenge. You can only play this game once and then you have to refresh the page. Try adding a play again button on the game over screen that restarts uh, a 10 second timer so you can play again and again. So we're going to do that, but we're also going to do a few more things. We're going to make the game even more challenging. We're going to make it so that well, the, the little pig is smaller, so it's, it's harder to click, and that every time you click it, it moves to a new random position on the screen. So you're basically chasing the pig around, around the screen, trying to, to click it. Every time you click it, he moves. Okay? And so um, this will be fun. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add a play again button. Let's go from the main screen to the game over screen. And we're going to add a button here. So from the, uh, make sure you're in, uh, not in code view, but in design view by clicking up here. Find the button and drag it down here below the text. Uh, now, whenever you add an element to your screen design, you need to go through its properties and change them. First of all, let's not uh, just leave the default name, button one. But instead, let's call it BTN for button, button play again. Okay, and that's a nice, uh, clear, uh, identifiable name. Okay, it's, it states that it is a button and it's the play again button. So it's good to give your objects uh, good uh, descriptive names when you create them. Okay, we don't want the word button on the text. We want to put the words play again. So change the text. You can change the width and height. You can do that there. You can simply drag and uh, move it about and that will change its width, height, and position. And um, that's pretty much all we need to do for this button. Now, we want to add some code for the button. The easiest way to add the click event for this button is to come up to the events tab here and you'll find that there's the click event, which is the primary uh, event for buttons. And here it says insert and show code. So let's click on that. And when we do that, it automatically switches us back to the code view. And we'll see now that it's added this function here at the top. Sorry. Uh, we'll see it's added, not that one, but let's go down a little bit. Down here, it's added this function to the bottom of our code. Now one thing I like to do is to place comments uh, before all of my functions. So let's come in and place a comment here uh, right above this function. And we'll just type in here something like return to the main screen when clicked. Okay, and that's a good comment that describes what this function here does when the button is clicked. Now let's look a little closer at this on event code block. It states that it's handling the button play again. That's what I called that button, as you recall. And it's handling the click event. Now notice if I click on there, there's all kinds of different types of events. There's change, key up, key down, mouse down, mouse move, etc. 
And um, these are the different types of events that a button can receive. But we're going to leave it on the click event. And then inside this yellow event block, we're going to place, uh, we, we see there's now a green function, callback function is what that's called, a callback function. And inside that, it simply has a purple block called console.log button play again click. Okay. And now if I were to run my program, and uh, I will let this go by here for 10 seconds. So now I'm on the screen. I see the play again button. If I click it, I'll see this console to, uh, down here opens up, and it uh, displays a message, button play again click. So this is simply a debugging uh, technique where uh, if you want to see if something's working, you can simply log a message to the console. And if it shows up here, then you know it's working. So we're going to remove this purple block. We don't need it. And we'll pull that out of there. Now, what do we want to do when this play again button is clicked? We want to do a couple things. First of all, we want to change our variable called score we want to change it back to zero because we're done playing a game and we want to reset it. So I'm going to click on the purple variable section and I see um, third option down, I see X equals something. So I'm going to take that out and pull it in here. Now, I don't have a variable called X, but I do have one called score. So I'm going to replace the word X with the word score. Make sure you don't put quotes around that. This is a variable name and so you don't put quotes around it. And what we want to do is set the score to zero. We'll place that in there. Next thing I want to do is under UI controls, I want to set the screen to a different screen. I want to go back to the main screen. So I'm going to pull set screen out and from the pull down menu and from the pull down menu, I can choose main screen. Now, the next thing I want to do is when I go back to the main screen, I want to start that 10 second timer again. Under the blue section, I find the set timeout, pull that in here put it underneath the blocks I've already put in. And then I'm going to do the same thing I do here, set text to the score and set the screen to the game over screen. And I'm going to do all this with 10,000 milliseconds. So that's going to be 10,000 there. That's 10 seconds. From this pull down menu, I want to choose the score label and set it to the score. Now it's important that I take, uh, get rid of these quotes and just put the word score in there without quotes around it. Again, that's the name of a variable. And so we don't put quotes around it. And then down under set screen, I want to set the screen to uh, my game over screen. So once the 10 seconds go by, we'll go to this game over screen. All right, let's test our game now. If I click run, uh, after 10 seconds go by, it will open up this game over screen and I, I didn't click the pig at all so I see a zero here but now if I click the play again we'll wait for 10 seconds to go by see so yeah, I clicked three times and so that's working great okay it's going back and forth now between the two screens this play again button is bringing me back to the other screen resetting the score to zero and letting me play the game for another 10 seconds Now, to make the game more interesting, we want the pig, the size of the pig, to be smaller on the screen. And so when the game first starts, let's make the pig about half the size it is now. Find the set size block and pull it here, right underneath the variable score gets zero. This is about on line nine. Now we want to change, we, we need to select the object that we want to resize, and that's going to be the pig object. If I go back to the design view and select the pig, I see that this, uh, this image here is called ID pig. So that's the one I'm choosing. I want to change the pig to 50 and 50, and that'll give it half the size it is. In addition to that, when we click on the pig, we want to uh, make it look like it's getting a little bit smaller. Let's come down here. We see there's a set size inside the mouse down and in the mouse up events. So let's change that. When we click on the pig and the mouse is down, let's make this a little smaller than 50. Let's make it 40 and 40. And then when we're done clicking on the pig, when the mouse is up and the, the, um, we're done clicking, let's set it back to that 50, 50. 
All right, let's test this and see what it looks like. See, now the pig is small. And when we click on it, it looks like he gets a little bit smaller every time we click it, but it comes back to his size of 50 by 50. Perfect. All right, we've made the pig smaller, but we also want the pig to move to a random location every time we click it. So we're going to create a function called move pig. Let's go to the function section and uh, pull out this very first set of blocks here. We can put it anywhere in here as long as it's not inside another function. All right, I'd like to add a comment above this function to describe what this does. So putting my comment here, what this does is set the pig location to a random x and y. So here's how we do that. Let's first of all call this function. Let's give it a good name. We don't want it to be called my function. So we'll call it move pig. No spaces in that name. And inside there we're going to create uh, or create two new variables, x position and y position. Under the variable section, let's create two new variables. Let's pull out bar x gets something, and let's do that twice. The first variable, let's call that x position, pos for position. And the next variable, let's call that y position. We want to choose a random number now, so this is under the math section. Let's find the random number block. Put one of them there and one of them there. Now, we need to know the size of the screen. On the x-axis, which is uh, the horizontal axis to the right and left, it's about mm, 320 pixels, 300 pixels wide. So why don't we choose a number between 0 and 300. And if we put our mouse over here, we see that on the x-axis, uh, starting at about, oh, right about up here somewhere, that's uh, y60, and down to here is about mm, y, we'll say, 400. So we can put the numbers in here. Let's go between 60 and 400. And that'll choose a random number between those ranges and store them in x position and y position. Then all we need to do is come over here and find a set position block. And let's drag that right underneath our two variables. Change the ID to the pig. In the first spot, that'll be our x location. Let's simply put x position. In the second input spot, let's put y position. And we can remove these last two, which refer to the size, by simply clicking on this little arrow that points to the, to the left, and that will remove those last two elements. We only need inputs for the ID and these two variables, x position and y position. Now, this is a function, but a function doesn't do any good unless you call it. So let's go back up to the very top of our code. And when the program first runs, we want to call our function. So let's pull this one out, stick it right here under set size, change my function to move pig. So that means when the game first starts, it'll randomly move the pig to a new location. But we also want to do that every time we click on the pig. So here in the event for the mouse down, let's add a function call right here after we change the score. Again, change my function to move pig. And note how you're spelling move pig. It has to be the same here as it was when you created the function. I'm using a capital P for the word pig. Otherwise, it's all lowercase. All right, let's test the program now. We can see the pig is moved. Oh, wow, look at that. Every time I click it, it goes to a random location somewhere on the screen. And after 10 seconds go by, you can see how many times I clicked it. I have the play again button. Perfect. The game is working great. All right, so this brings you up through adding quite a few extra features to this game. Hopefully you've learned a few things. You've learned about how to create new functions, how to reset a variable value, 
how to create random numbers and use those to set the position of an object on the screen. You've also learned how to make a button and use that button to change screens. So following this uh, video, go ahead and, and edit that remix of the Poke the Pig. And then you might want to add some other features, other creative things that you can uh, figure out how to do to make this game even better. Thanks for watching. See you next time.